By now, the hype surrounding Dragon's Dogma 2 is probably impossible to miss. You've likely seen those epic clips of players and their companions scaling colossal monsters, mages reshaping the battlefield with powerful spells, warriors unleashing earth-shattering sword attacks, and archers raining down destruction from afar. If that got your adrenaline pumping, that's awesome. But before you dive headfirst into the hype, there are a few key things to know about how Dragon's Dogma 2 approaches the fantasy experience. Here's the thing, if you played the first game, many of these features will feel familiar. Combined, they can create a unique but potentially challenging gameplay loop. This challenge might be your cup of tea, or it might turn you off entirely. So, to set realistic expectations, especially if you're new to the series, let's delve deeper. The world of Dragon's Dogma 2 is vast, and traversing it on foot will be your primary mode of transportation for a significant portion of the game. Think back to vanilla World of Warcraft, where you ran everywhere until level 40, and finally unlocked your first mount. Dragon's Dogma 2 allows sprinting at full speed, but due to stamina limitations, there are some restrictions, which will be explained later. For newcomers to the Dragon's Dogma series, there are a few, albeit limited, ways to make getting around a bit easier. During your adventures, you'll encounter rare items called Port Crystals. These are crucial for enabling fast travel. Once acquired, you must physically carry them to a chosen location on the map and place them down to establish a fast travel point. These can be freely relocated, allowing you to customize your travel network as needed. Heck, you could even carry one Port Crystal with you at all times, teleport to a town to sell loot or store extra gear, and then port back, pick up the crystal, and continue your journey. However, Port Crystals are scarce, so you can't scatter them liberally across the map. Careful planning is essential for maximizing their effectiveness. Besides their rarity, they are also among the heaviest items in the game, making constant carrying impractical. While a strategic network of port crystals is one aspect of the fast travel system, the other crucial element is fairy stones. These are equally rare and expensive consumable items that allow you to teleport to any place port crystal. So building a stockpile of fairy stones is necessary for frequent fast travel. There's a glimmer of hope though. Players might eventually obtain the Eternal Fairy Stone, which, unlike regular Fairy Stones, can be used infinitely. In the first game, this item was introduced much later, so a similar addition in the sequel is possible. Beyond Port Crystals, players can also utilize Ox Carts, but these come with their own set of drawbacks. Unlike the controlled teleportation offered by Port Crystals and Fairy Stones, Ox Carts follow predetermined routes, offering no choice in destination. Additionally, they are not the safest option, as your party can be ambushed while traveling from point A to point B. So, to sum it up, fast travel in Dragon's Dogma 2 relies on a combination of strategically placed port crystals and consumable fairy stones. While the Eternal Fairy Stone might become available later, careful planning and resource management are crucial for navigating the vast world efficiently. Dragon's Dogma 2 implements a save system that emphasizes consequence and commitment. In contrast to most RPGs, Dragon's Dogma 2 offers just one save slot with strategic autosaves triggered by key events and location changes. This system, reminiscent of titles like Dark Souls and Neo, discourages save scumming and forces players to embrace the weight of their decisions. Quests particularly hold potential for permanent failure, adding a layer of tension and risk-reward to your journey, but more on that in a bit. Are you ready for a game that lets you experience the adventure without constant guidance? If so, Dragon's Dogma 2 might be the perfect fit. Unlike your typical questing system, quest givers are not readily identifiable. They lack those familiar glowing question marks, and you must actively engage with characters to find those who offer quests, much like in Elden Ring or The Legend of Zelda. Quests can also be triggered through NPCs who approach you on your journey or by checking the notice board for side hustles alongside the main storyline. Therefore, skipping conversations with NPCs can easily lead to missed quests. Additionally, the game provides minimal guidance for completing quests, leaving it up to you to decipher the objectives. When stuck on a quest, a helpful strategy is to hire a player's pawn with specific quest knowledge. You'll learn how to hire pawns early on, so this tip can save you frustration. Dragon's Dogma 2 also introduces a few less popular quest types, such as time-limited quests, escort quests with tiered rewards based on performance, and several quests with permanent failure states. The infamous Sphinx's Riddle quest is a good example, offering only one chance to solve cryptic riddles correctly. Remember, Dragon's Dogma 2 lacks a save scumming feature, so retrying quests after failure is not an option. After a long day of questing in combat, you'll eventually need to take a long rest to counter the reduced health bar mechanic, which I'll explain shortly. 
The safest option is to seek out a town's inn, allowing you to fully recover. But what if adventure leads you far from civilization and returning takes too long? In that case, you can set up an improvised camp in the wilderness to restore your health bar to full. However, the campfire may attract lurking creatures and monsters, potentially interrupting your well-deserved rest and forcing you into another battle when you're already low on resources. When it comes to combat, apart from powerful monsters with large health pools and devastating abilities, there are a few things that will keep you constantly on your toes. Firstly, there's no target lock-on. You'll have to rely on your ability to position yourself and face the enemy head-on, even when there are multiple foes around you. Secondly, a proper dodge roll mechanic will once again be a class-specific ability. This mirrors the situation in the first game, but this time, it's a feature of the Thief class. Other classes will instead need to sprint away or jump, which can sometimes help too. Next, we have stamina and its incredible importance. The most important thing to keep in mind is that depleting stamina fully in Dragon's Dogma 2 comes with a major drawback that will usually prove fatal. If you use up all of your stamina, your character will stop in place to catch a breath, leaving them vulnerable to all damage. As a side note, stamina also depletes out of combat while sprinting, so running at full speed for prolonged periods is not an option. Finally, to round out this combat-specific chapter, there is a certain feature that might become annoying after playing for a while. Each time you're hit, a small portion of the damage not only depletes your current health, but also reduces your maximum health. This means you won't be able to fully recover until you rest, either at a campfire you built in the wilderness, or at an inn in a town. This mechanic seems inspired by the exhaustion system found in Dungeons & Dragons, where characters become progressively weaker as they endure fatigue. Now, considering everything mentioned about the dangers of being out in the open, the necessary resting mechanic that can be interrupted unless you sleep in the comfort of a proper bed, the painfully slow world traversal, and the inability to manually save your game when you deem it appropriate, you will start to get a slightly better picture of why Dragon's Dogma 2 is shaping up to be a challenging game. However, the quirks don't stop here, so here are a few more things to be aware of before you plunge into the game. It appears that the user interface hasn't undergone significant changes from the original game, aside from a cosmetic update. Dragon's Dogma's UI wasn't its strong point back in the day, so in the sequel, we're once again stuck with an unintuitive UI inherited from its predecessor. The crafting interface serves as a prime example. To craft anything, you need to select an item from the inventory, choose Combine, and then select one of the recipes associated with the chosen item, provided you've discovered it before, of course. And this process can be cumbersome since you need to know the ingredients of a potion or food recipe beforehand to determine which item to pick first. Unfortunately, there's no list containing all the recipes you've learned so far, which is why the crafting system hasn't evolved much compared to the original game. Another minor issue with the UI that players might encounter is the lack of detailed tooltips, particularly regarding specific numbers such as healing or damage values. This is crucial for two reasons. Firstly, there's a plethora of items that can restore health or stamina, and deciding which to keep or use in recipes can be time-consuming. Secondly, food items, whether herbs, meat, fruit, or vegetables, can age and spoil over time, altering their properties for better or worse. Some food might provide greater healing benefits if left in the inventory for a while, so additional information regarding exact numbers would greatly enhance the user experience with this system. Lastly, during combat, there's a lack of damage numbers displayed on the screen. Personally, I prefer having damage numbers visible, as they offer valuable feedback. With them, you can better gauge the potency of your hits with each weapon or gear upgrade, and determine if the enemy is resistant to certain types of damage based on the amount you're hitting for. Very few games offer satisfying inventory management that truly enhances gameplay. While many developers aim to incorporate realism into their games, this often results in tedious mechanics that detract from the overall enjoyment. Unfortunately, Dragon's Dogma 2 follows this negative trend, introducing encumbrance hurdles that become increasingly burdensome as you progress. The more items you carry, including crafting materials, food, herbs, and equipment, the slower you move and the more stamina you deplete. Even essential items, such as camping kits, which are crucial for survival, weigh you down significantly. While you can alleviate this burden to some extent by distributing gear among companions, this solution proves inadequate in later stages of the game. While the game offers a personal storage accessible at inns for managing your inventory, the limited travel options mentioned earlier can still lead to some frustration. It all boils down to the fact that managing your inventory will most likely become a repetitive and potentially tiresome task as you progress deeper into the game. When it comes to looting, it's crucial to pay close attention while killing enemies or breaking objects. This is because the items available for collection are marked with a faint, easily overlooked flashing glow. Though seemingly minor, this detail is worth noting as it leaves the possibility of missing out on valuable items amidst the chaos. Finally,
Additionally, water in this game spells certain death. If you venture into anything deeper than knee level, you'll meet your demise instantly. According to the game's lore, this is attributed to brine, small creatures residing in the vast bodies of water, eagerly preying on anything entering their domain. However, you can leverage this to your advantage, because tossing goblins and other smaller enemies into the water ensures their demise too. The perspective you take on these features is entirely your choice. Nowadays, many games are designed for quick consumption, with numerous accessibility features. Therefore, it's interesting to see Capcom taking a different approach by allowing players to immerse themselves fully in the world of Dragon's Dogma 2 without holding their hands. As mentioned at the beginning, veteran Dragon's Dogma players may find the features discussed in this video familiar. However, for newcomers to the series, these aspects may offer a fresh perspective on what to expect. If you're still unsure whether Dragon's Dogma 2 is right for you, my suggestion is to wait for a comprehensive review. This will help you determine if the game aligns with your interests and is worth investing your time in. What are your thoughts on the challenges awaiting in Dragon's Dogma 2? Specifically, how do you feel about the available fast travel options? Share your opinions in the comments below. And to all you Dragon's Dogma veterans, if I missed anything important that could help new players ahead of time, please leave a comment below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with anyone you think might be interested in Dragon's Dogma 2. And if you want to see more content like this, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching, and until next time, have a wonderful day and lots of fun.